Hello all well, YouTubers, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this Invest 98L discussion for July 5th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that every single one of you please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications. Thank you guys so much for 600 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 700 subscribers and to our next long-term goal of the big 1,000. So please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications as well as watching the whole video. Both of these things really do support my channel and, you know, watching the whole video, it's a win-win. You know, you, you get the best for the content and I get the watch time, which I really do need for my channel. And please also like and share this video. Thank you. Now, let's get on with today's video. So today we're going to be talking about Invest 98L in the Atlantic here, or actually in the Gulf of Mexico, I should say. And it has a 40% chance to develop within the next five days here. And this could be more of a threat to land than Tropical Depression 5, which is on the top right corner of your screen if you want to watch it after this video. Um, but as of the latest update here, recent satellite radar, and obviously, because I know there's going to be another update because it always happens, I do a video and as soon as I upload it, there always has to be another update. So... The, with my look after this video is done, there might be a 60% chance of development. The development chances might actually increase because it's like the storm is developing really well. But as of now, is at a 40% chance of development here. Recent satellite and radar observations that a smaller pressure system has formed now. All right, but there is a broad area of low pressure near the northern Gulf Coast and is producing some showers and storms near the center. Um, and some slight development could. All right, just so we have some slight development before it moves inland early Monday, but that's not the, the problem. What the problem is. All right, is that the low will merge offshore, and that's where the development is off the Carolinas later this week, where environmental conditions will be more conducive. So it's got slight chances of developing here, but I move over land, and once it gets back out over the coast of the Carolinas right here, this is where it could develop. So that's what the National Hurricane Center is trying to say here. We look at those ocean water anomalies, as, as you can see, we're sitting right now about average, heading into some above average waters, but look at this. Once it heads up the East Coast, it's going to have a good time. So I'm really, far, like, so really far above average ocean water here. And look at this. It's going to move right along the Gulf Stream. Water temperature is going to be in the upper 80s potentially in some spots. Mid to upper 80s. So that's like bath water. Even where it's sitting now, we got some bath water. And that will continue for its whole journey. Up until it leaves that Gulf Stream. And once it leaves the Gulf Stream, it's going to have sort of a bad time. Water temperature dropped into the 70s and quickly back into the 60s. But until then, this storm's going to have one heck of a time here. We look at that tropical cyclonic heat where it's sitting right now. I mean, we do have some. It's on the lower side, but it's some. Once it moves over that Gulf Stream, not only are the ocean waters warm, but again, we also do have a little bit more tropical cyclonic heat, a little more on the moderate scale as opposed to down here. So a little bit more tropical cyclonic heat, and that is due to the Gulf Stream taking the heat and dispersing up the rest of the Gulf Stream here because the Gulf Stream does sort of go like this and up here. So it's sucking that heat energy out of the Caribbean, but the Caribbean still has a lot of tropical cyclonic heat here. So here's the invest. Uh, there is actually a decent area of spin. We got some spinning uh, motion here. I do see some spinning motion. All right, and for not even being a tropical depression yet, for just being a tropical low, it actually looks decently organized for what it's classified as. All right, we do have some broad area areas of showers and storms to the north of the center. We got some to the south of the center, but over there is a little low that's starting to develop right there, and it's actually it actually has developed, um, and this will have a 40% chance again of developing over the next few days. We look at the current surface low, where is it at currently? About 88 degrees west and about 28 and a half degrees north to be exact, if that's what those coordinates. So there's the low right there. Uh, we'll be moving in this direction toward Florida. Some could even put out here, out this way. Don't know exactly where it's gonna go yet, but it will be, it will be moving over land over some at some point, that we do know. The question is, does it move back out over water? And that's going to be the key for development does, developing the system. If it moves over water, great. But if not, uh-oh. Because the system would not form. And if you look at the GEPS tracks, none of them take it over water until it leaves the Delmarva. Once it gets out over the Delmarva, then it finally gets over the water. But by the time it does that, the waters are too cold up there by the Delmarva for development. So they're saying more of an inland track over the southeast U.S. Still some showers and storms because it's still low pressure. But they're, they're saying it's going to go inland. Um, GEFS tracks oddly say the same thing, all right, except they say it's going to spin around for a couple of days, the low's just going to sit there, and then a couple of models do say that it will move inland over the southeast and back out over the waters, but it's by Maryland and the Delaware, New Jersey by then, it's not going to develop, and it won't even, like, 
this, and the model said it's going to move back over the water briefly and make landfall in Cape Cod again. So the modeling isn't too confident right now. It depends what you exactly look at. Since this was just recently named in Invest, there's not going to be too many models on it, but a couple models, actually all, um, all except one, do say that we will have a tropical storm develop at some point. Obviously, since it was just named, like I said, we won't have too many models on this yet. But if we look at the GFS model here. Actually, let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see it better. There we go. All right, so GFS model here. All right, so you got to watch, and then there we go. It starts to exit the, the low exits to the coast. You got a little area of uh, heavy rainfall just to the south right there where that low pressure system is. Still going to some heavy rainfall to the mid-Atlantic. All right, we're regardless of tropical development. All right, here's your low starting to spin up. Low does take it pretty close to the coastline. All right, and there you go. There's your rainfall, and it moves into New England, and then it exits itself out to sea. If we look at the surface winds here, all right, let's take a look at those surface winds. Low moves up the coast, and yeah, we do get some stronger winds. I mean, I do see a tiny, tiny area of orange. You guys might not even be able to see. I, I just happen to see it. I don't know why. All right, but there you go. We do have some tropical storm force winds. All right, no, green does not mean tropical storm force winds. I usually say that, but that's because it depends on where you zoom. Because right, as you zoom in, the key on the right hand side here starts to change. So now in order to have a tropical storm, you need those yellow orangish colors. And there's a little, very, very tiny dot of orange. If I have to show you guys, I will actually zoom in a lot further. So I can actually show you guys. Um, you can barely see it, but there's a little dot of orange, but that can always change. Right, but there it is on the GFS model. Don't say I didn't show you. All right, so we do have some barely tropical storm force winds, if not a tropical depression here. Um, that's right over the next few days. And there you go. I showed you all that for nothing. There's the orange, and you can actually see it now. Like I said, does it get too far north by this point to deem it a tropical storm as opposed to a subtropical storm or just a regular low pressure system? It stays over land too long. This thing can't develop. All right, it would have to go over the water first. And here's your cyclonic vorticity signature, and you can see a lot of the cyclonic energy is basically situated over land. So the mid-Atlantic could get very well impacted by this. If we look at the Canadian model now, all right, let's look at the Canadian model. And again, this does take it a little closer to the water, but it's still keeping the storm system over land. All right. Honestly, it doesn't really make a difference where, I mean, like, well, does it have a higher chance of development if it tracks inland but near the coast as opposed to well inland and away from the coast? Either one of these tracks means it's not going to develop because either, like, both tracks keep it inland. It doesn't matter how close to the water you are. It's either your, the system's on the water or it's inland. If it's on the water, great, it could possibly develop. If it's inland, then it can't. It's not like, well, if it rides a coastline, does it have some of it? No. All right. It has to be either over water to develop it or on land to not develop it. And it will be sitting here possibly. Could it stall out? Could the low stall out and break some very heavy rainfall? Who knows? But it does look like a decent tropical, maybe subtropical storm or depression. Then it makes landfall. Actually, a Canadian model says it'll make landfall on the Jersey Shore. So that's an interesting development too. If you look at the surface winds here, I right, take a look at those surface winds, and as you can see, we barely have a little pressure or, or a tropical storm. There's a little area of orange right there. You can barely see it. All right, but it, this could be gain minimal tropical storm status, just like tropical depression 5L. All right, if you watch that video, you know what I'm talking about. Um, as this system moves to the northeast New England, it will be weakening, and this system will probably be hanging around, and we'll be watching the system for a few days, possibly not even a week, probably about five or six days until it finally dies as it heads toward New England. Um, if we look at the cyclonic vorticity signature with the Canadian model, all right, here you can see some decent cyclonic vorticity signature, but if only it was over water about 50 miles more. A little bit 50, 50 miles track to the east would be nice to at least develop this, but here's some more early, early uh, cycle track guidance here, and as you can see, here's your low pressure, and you can see a lot of the tracks you keep one track does take it out to sea eventually all right but all the tracks have an inland for at least a couple days all right so there's like your, your more you know track guidance and current intensity according to this at least says 25 knots in terms of sustained winds right now which means about 30 miles an hour uh, if we look at the um the tc genesis i do show you guys this map a lot for the ntp and the cmc we they think that we can have a high chance of development i mean they think um, what's that? About 60 to 60 to 70 percent chance of development um, over to, off the southeast coast. All right. If you look at the um, the NCP ensemble based probability here, this is tropical cyclone genesis, and you can see that. Look at this. This is NCP ensemble based, and they think 100 percent chance of development 
and at a lot of the model checks will keep it close to shore but just offshore which would be good really good for development if we look at uh, again um ncp fnmoc and cmc kind of combine those models they also say about 50 to 60 if not 60 70 percent chance of development here um if we look at finally here some more ncp maps you can see that 90 to almost 100 percent chance of development but these set of model tracks do keep it a little closer to shore so we got to watch this potentially edward could be if not if it doesn't form then it'll be Faye. all right so thank you for watching today's video guys and weather dude signing off till next time catch you guys next video